what we've seen are students continue to have poor achievement, financial mismanagement, and a lack of specificity around academic programming. I'm going to lay those out to you today. But again, an analogy I used the other day is Tulsa Public Schools is a bus being driven by Superintendent Deborah Gist. That bus has veered off the road. That bus has gone into a ditch. And now that bus has crashed right to a tree. It is time to change leadership in Tulsa. It is time to put this district back on the right direction. Tulsa Public Schools serves 33,000 students. When we look at that, you look at the true potential here for a district to truly impact students' lives. Over 4,000 teachers in the district. Teachers that want better for these kids. But what we've seen, especially over the last five years, is a terrible trajectory for this district. And so I want to lay some of those uh, factors out for you today. The first we're going to talk about is this reading proficiency I've got here in front of me. When you talk about reading proficiency, this is one of the number one factors we look at for can students be successful. Reading proficiency. So when you look at this, if we go back from 2018, Tulsa Public Schools had 21% of their students reading proficient. Now they have 12%. This is tragic for Tulsa students. The state average of reading proficiency is 27.9%. So Tulsa Public School students are reading at less than half, half of the same percent of most public school students in the state of Oklahoma. 15 elementary schools. Students are, we have less than 5% students reading proficient. I'm going to say that again. 15 elementary schools have less than 5% of their students reading proficient. This is a tragedy for these students. This is heartbreaking for these parents. I want to talk a little bit about these schools. When we talk about the failing schools in the dis Tulsa School District, you're going to see that most students in Tulsa attend a school on our F list. So 65% of schools in the district are on the F list. What that means is they're in the bottom 5% of schools in the state of Oklahoma. Not only does Tulsa represent this large percentage of failing schools, I want to give you another key category. That is what we refer to as MRI. That's the most more rigorous intervention schools. So these are schools that have been on the F list for five years straight. So they've never come off the F list, right? Tulsa Public Schools makes up 42% of MRI schools. So I want to contextualize this a little bit. Tulsa Public Schools has 18 schools on this MRI list. Oklahoma City Public Schools has seven schools on this list. In this past year, Oklahoma City Public Schools had 13 schools that got off of this, this list. While Tulsa Public Schools had many more schools on this list, they only had six schools come off of the MRI list. So you see the difference between a district that has momentum moving in the right direction and a district that continues to have the same school sites that are way underperforming our kids. This is a laser focus for our administration to improve reading scores, to improve student academic performance. And the largest district in the state this is a tremendous problem and a disservice to the parents and kids. I, I do want to talk about another topic as well. I want to talk about the finances of Tulsa Public School District. This is something that through the accreditation process, we have seen tremendous red flags, brought tremendous concern for me and other board members as well. So one of the things that we saw as we began digging into Tulsa's accreditation are reports from board members at Tulsa Public Schools that the superintendent had not provided financial documents and reports that they had requested. This is a very serious concern. A statutorily, the board, that, that local board, is to be the oversight body over the finances. So if you're not providing financial documentation to the district, you have a real lack of accountability here at Tulsa Public Schools. Then as we begin to dig further, of course we know about the $1 million 
of misappropriated funds, $1 million. This is the largest amount we've seen in the last couple of years. And when you couple that with the audit findings of the last three years, so for three years in a row, Tulsa Public Schools has in their audit report that they lack internal, the appropriate internal controls of finances. So three years straight, Tulsa Public Schools auditors have said that they, quote, lack internal controls of finances. Well, it's no, you take a look at that, folks, and you see the controls aren't in place. You see money not going to the classroom, and you see misspending of funds in this capacity, and you see that there is a real dereliction here of finances. about funding, I want to keep talking about the financial situation here. Per pupil expenditures, this is the number that we focus in on talking about how much a school is receiving. One of the things we've seen at Tulsa Public Schools is they continue from their leadership to talk about being underfunded. Folks, Tulsa Public Schools receives more per pupil funding, well more than the state average, well more than most public schools do in the state of Oklahoma. Tulsa Public Schools is well funded. That is not the reason for the lack of academic success here. But no matter how much you fund a district, if money isn't spent appropriately, you're not going to see that dramatic improvement in student performance. When you look at the number that 48%, only 48% of their funding actually goes to the classroom, this is where you begin to see even more issues. You see growth of administration. You see administrative bloat. You see the growth of bureaucracy instead of resources for teachers, instead of higher teacher pay, instead of every single child in Tulsa Public Schools having the best math, reading, science curriculum available, we have more administrative positions. So when you take a look at this, even though Funding continues to increase year after year for Tulsa Public Schools with more funding in this district than ever before. You see academic results continuing to decline. We have to act now. Tulsa Public School parents, teachers, kids deserve action. I'm here today to demand that action from Tulsa Public Schools. First, they have to reorient their finances to, number one, get to the classroom, and, but number two, be transparent and accountable to the taxpayers who are paying for this district services. Number two, Tulsa Public Schools, by the end of this academic year, should at least be at the state average for reading performance. They should at least be at the average. Tulsa Public School kids and folks, you're gonna hear people say, you know what, why is the superintendent saying he wants that kind of growth in reading? Well, I'm gonna tell you why, because your kids can do it. Every Tulsa parent out there, I want you to hear my words. Your kids can do this. Your kids can read on grade level. But what you've seen is a failed administration that has not done a service for your kids. Not only should your kids be reading on average, your kids should be exceptional. Tulsa is a tremendous town with tremendous people. Your kids are capable of great things, not the low performance you've seen from Tulsa Public Schools. Next, we've got to get these schools off the F list. We want to see a serious plan that like we've seen in other districts that have taken schools that have struggled traditionally, or we've seen schools that have struggled to achieve in reading and math and see that improvement, we should see that in action. We should see these school sites start performing and we should see that this year. It absolutely can happen if that's the focus of the school district. In conclusion, I will continue to work with every district in the state to improve their academic performance. I will continue to champion innovation, reform and change to improve student outcomes. Tulsa Public Schools has shown no interest 
and no dedication in doing that for their kids. What we've continued to see is a focus on things that have no proof that they improve student outcomes. What we've continued to see is a district that because of their actions and dereliction of duty, that the most vulnerable kids in their district have suffered the most. You see kids that are economically disadvantaged that are not getting the education they deserve. And parents, I'm here today to tell you, I'm gonna fight for your kids. I'm gonna fight for you as parents. I'm gonna to continue to force change here at TPS so that your kids have the best education possible. We cannot condemn Tulsa Public School students to another year in a failing district. We have to see substantial change. No action is absolutely not an option here. We will take action, we will move, we will demand better for these students. That's all I, that's my, the conclusion of my comments. I'll now take some questions from the press. So.